not many people can figure out how to play exactly, precisely in rhythm. But if you do, if you can figure that out, you can have a huge competitive advantage at an audition. If your notes are in rhythm, if they feel locked in, if they feel in the pocket, it's like cooking the perfect dish and then sprinkling just the right amount of salt to bring out the flavors. The listener on your committee, they can hear the little tiny micro imprecisions. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to use the metronome to learn to play super accurate rhythms. And by the way, this is one of the big practice strategies that I use uh, on my excerpts to make sure that they are really high level in each of the major areas that the committee might be listening for. You know, the musical elements, time, rhythm, dynamics, tone, phrasing, character. Each of those musical elements has to be sufficiently high level in order to, you know, get yes votes and get through the committee. I put a bunch of my other practice strategies, the five biggest ones that I used into this PDF. The PDF is called Five Practice Strategies for Your Next Audition, and you can download that at robnopper.com slash strategies. So here is the problem. When people think about fixing their time and rhythm, they think about I'm going to play to the metronome because the metronome is a mathematical, uh, you know, unquestionable expression of perfect time. And uh, so they put the metronome on quarter notes and they play along. And they assume, well, if I play along with this, it's going to seep into my brain and through, you know, osmosis. I'm going to have a perfect expression of, you know, mathematical time perfection. But it doesn't happen. You don't build that skill just by hoping. The problem with, you know, putting your metronome on quarters is, uh, first of all, people tend to just play close to the quarter note clicks. You know, they play something that sounds relatively close, but also it only lines up with, you know, the notes that fall on the downbeats. And so if you want to line up all the notes in the middle and you're just putting the metronome on the quarter, how are you actually finding out if those notes in between the clicks are in time? You can't. You're just assuming. All right, let's get into it. Uh, so I've been really working on this Bartok Concerto for Orchestra. Um, it's made up of quarters, eighths, and sixteenths, you know, some of the great rhythmic note values. I want to play you my before take so you can hear what it sounds like uh, and you can hear what I'm trying to fix. So I've learned the notes, obviously I know this piece, but I don't feel like those are really perfectly expressed in time notes. It doesn't feel in the pocket. I'm gonna show you my step-by-step -step approach to fix it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out a measure that is particularly difficult for me to play really perfectly in time. So what I would like to do is I would like to learn to play these notes along with 16th notes on the metronome. If I turn the metronome on to 16th notes and I try to play along, what happens is um, the notes that I'm playing are close, but they're not right exact with the metronome. So what I'm going to do is instead of starting with playing this measure, I'm going to start with just playing sixteenths, just playing sixteenth notes on the drum and listening to the click. And what I have here is I have the click it's coming out of my phone, it's in my headphones. I have one ear on and one ear off, so that out of one ear I can hear the, the click very clearly, you know. <laughs> to me, even this isn't very good. Even this isn't exact. Like it's close, but it's not really locked in. It's not in the pocket. And so this is the key struggle here. This is the place, you know, where you might need to spend the most time. The goal here is to make it so that every note lines up so exactly with the metronome that they're so in sync together 
that they sound like they're the same exact sound source, like they're part of the same instrument. There starts to get this locked in feeling. It's kind of like at first it's a phasing feeling. It's like, you know, a Steve Reich phasing feeling and suddenly, boom, it's locked in exactly right where every note is lining up with the click. It might take me like two minutes, three minutes, sometimes five minutes to get there. I don't want it to be a fluke. I want to make sure that every note consistently is locked in. Once I have every note locked in, then I can start building back to the most complex version that I'm working on. You know, the final resulting measure that I want to play. So my step two is to take out the E of beat two um, and do exactly the same thing. So And I experience some of the same problems. You know, I start with slightly not in sync notes. But once I get there, then I'm ready for the next step, which is to then take out the other note, which is the downbeat. That takes me a little time, then I take the final step, which is step four, I add an accent. So I've gone through these few steps, so let's compare before and after. So here is what the before sounded like. And here's what the after sounded like. Not bad, right? If you're interested in checking out the five practice strategies that I use, you know, beyond just this one, a bunch of other ones, you can download that at robnopper.com slash strategies. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.